Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're going to build a steam crusher and hopefully get into some mixed berry pie. Before we get into that, I wanted to give you a couple of updates since it's been a minute since we've been on our max difficulty series. First and foremost, our liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen are doing absolutely great. You can see here that I forgot to adjust the hydro sensor, so our liquid oxygen tank is completely filled. Not a big deal, but I normally like to make it stop around here. So if we ever draw enough liquid oxygen out of here, this will now stay static right about this location here. And our liquid hydrogen is doing amazing as well. You can see we have two full tiles, and that's not even counting the tank and a half that we've already filled here. Now remember, it's filling that much. As soon as it gets over 450 kilos, the pump turns on and sends some of the hydrogen that way. What you'll also notice is that because of the equilibrium we've reached, We've actually reached a perfect vacuum in here. As soon as the hydrogen comes through the vent, it liquefies and gets sent right down here to this pool. Very happy with how this ended up. Another update is the water purification system, and it's working great as well. You can see we're already starting to get a backlog of nice, fresh, clean water. And while we do occasionally get this vent backed up, it doesn't take it too long for this thermo aqua tuner to heat up enough due to the water and the new steam vent tamer that we put in that's connected to that same cooling pipe that eventually all this turns into beautiful steam as well which then it gets siphoned out and drops over here now you may not have seen this because i did this in the background of a year in review video but basically instead of just building an independent steam vent tamer we timed it into our coolant for our main water tank. And the beauty of this system is, as soon as the cool steam vent erupts, it instantly flashes the water and then drains right down here into our main tank. We did seal it off with a nice visco gel lock. And so far, the system's been working perfectly. Now I am going through the process of completely vacuuming this place out. And once it is vacuumed of all the extra gases, I'll then destroy this gas pump and get rid of this gas vent. Because that would mean as soon as this cool steam vent erupts, the only thing that would be in here is steam and it would be such a little amount because it would spread so quickly over the area that it would instantly flash into water and all the meantime the thermal aqua tuner just keeps driving which means it keeps getting hotter which means it turns even more of this polluted water into steam also fresh out of the printing pod we managed to get ourselves a peter parker yes this may have had something to do with me just seeing the new spider-man in theaters but peter parker is a welcome addition and he's just going to be another farmer slash rancher. Now, in his case, he's going to prioritize farming over ranching because we have plenty of ranchers because I think it's finally time to get our dupes into some advanced foods. And I believe we're going to go into mixed berry pies. There's a couple of reasons for that. First, mixed berry pies give you a superb plus five quality food, which is only rivaled by such things as the Frost Burger, and the spicy tofu. With the mixed berry pie, we're already growing the gristleberry. We also grow the sleet wheat grain, so we just need to add grub fruit. That's not too bad. But you'll notice it says we have 23,901 sleet wheat grains. I'm pretty sure this happened because of a bug, because there's no way we actually have that much grain. So I came over here and looked at our sleet wheat grain, and it doesn't actually tell you how much is there when you select it. You can see here, it just shows deep freeze, sterile atmosphere, fresh and in use. But we go to properties and it says there's 23.9 tons of it. That's a lot of sleet wheat. And that's on top of the fact that old Gambit and Clark Kent have been mass producing frost buns. And to confirm, I went over to the resource side and it does say that I have 23.9 tons of sleet wheat grain. We gotta use it up somewhere. Might as well put it into some mixed berry pie. Now I do have some concerns. All of this sleet wheat, in combination with all of this bristleberry, takes a fair bit of amount of farming dupe labor. So we're gonna make sure we try to build it as efficient as possible. And also to that point, we're gonna try to build it in our existing colony. Because as it stands, we have a lot of dupes that sit inside the colony because A, they don't have anything to do outside the colony, or B, because I've just finished a large project and some of our Atmo suits are not filling up with oxygen. Now, this has nothing to do with the amount of oxygen going in there because the oxygen line is running flat out. I've added to the spaghetti, if you can kind of separate your eyes a little bit, the main three lines go directly into the colony. 
with this top line going directly into the Atmo suits. We also have it so when these two lines that are supposed to be going into the colony as an oxygen supply for the atmosphere, when they get too full, their excess goes directly into the Atmo suit supply. So the Atmo suit supply never takes a break. But even with that, because so many duplicates are leaving and coming back, well, if we're fairly busy, it's five or six suits that'll get filled and then returned and then filled again without an opportunity to fill the rest of these suits. Now, I've tried many different ways of more efficient Atmo suit filling. Truth be told, the best I have found is just send them right through. The only other thing that might be beneficial is if we separated the exits. If maybe you had one exit on the left side and one exit on the right side and each had their own independent oxygen supply. The problem with that is you then have to separate which dupes can leave to the left and which dupes can leave to the right. Otherwise, you'll end up with suit problems. So I've always preferred the one exit to the base sort of setup. With that being said, one of the downfalls of putting the grub fruit in here is actually because I wanted to use this space for some sort of dupe condos. But if I did that, there wouldn't be enough room for the addition of dupe condos plus the grub fruits. And then I had an idea. I could just connect the two colonies using transit tubes. So one transit tube could go in between two unatmo suit areas. For instance, if I had an area over here and you couldn't get to it by door or ladder and the only way to get into it was by transit tube, well, they wouldn't have to wear atmo suits inside here because it'd be temperature controlled and it'd have its own oxygen supply. Now the disadvantage to a system like that is if your transit tubes ever went out, you're in big trouble. I suppose we'll cross that bridge when we get there, but for now, I wanted to show you another problem we're having. If you remember way back in the series, we had this beautiful iron volcano and a couple steam turbines strapped to it. And we had enough steam in here to where it could absorb the heat, no problem, and it didn't require any cooling. Well, then I had the bright idea to bring all the liquid resin in here so that it could flash and turn into ISO resin. And that's been working great. Now, right now I have this door locked because it's connected to this thermo sensor because I didn't want dupes to come in here and grab all this nice hot iron until it warmed this area up. But if I give you an example, we can reduce this down to 130. The steam turbines turn on and this door opens, which means some duplicates are going to come over here and get some of this nice hot iron for use in steel production. What's even better is you can now see that we've actually collected almost a ton of ISO resin. And this is in addition to the fact that we've already created three tons of insulation and have been making beautiful visco gel. And part of the reason why our ISO resin production is just going bonkers is because, well, our tree gets to eat a lot. Current count is we're maintaining 171 Paku, and they still have a lot of blossom seeds to go through. This is enough blossom seeds to basically run the course of our colony. Occasionally, because the game is hiccuping so much, we'll end up with more than two Paku in here. It's not a huge deal, just means this door is going to stay open for longer. But what happens is when they hatch, it takes them a while to figure out which way they need to go. So we'll get a clump of four or five of them, and then when they finally realize they need to go over here, they'll all go together, splash down on the pond together. As an example is this Paku fry that just hatched, and he's not moving very fast. But the problem we're having with this setup is whenever the resin flashes into ISO resin, it also releases steam, which means this place gets overpressurized and this iron volcano will not erupt. Boy, do I have a plan for you. Now, one method we could use is to take all the exhaust water from the steam turbines and just put it somewhere else. But I wanted to do something a little bit more higher speed, lower drag, if you will. So we're extending this into a four tile high area and we're actually just going to destroy the steam. We're also not going to care what temperature this steam is over here. So we're just going to reclaim all that beautiful diamond. Now that we've finished making this little room four tiles high, we can start building our doors. We're going to start with a couple of mechanized airlocks. Actually, we're going to start with a lot more than a couple. We're just going to keep building mechanized airlocks. Now they don't need to be powered, but what they're going to need to be doing is opening and then slowly closing one after another. Now I went through this whole thing trying to use buffer and filter gates in the past and then I realized everything's just easier since the advent of the timer sensor. Now in order to set this up, you have the game paused and you reset both timers so that the little arrow is up at the top. So the idea here is that steam will slowly drift into these doors as you just saw. And then when the time comes, 
these two doors are going to shut, trapping all this steam in here, and then these six doors will shut, destroying the steam. Another key point to this whole setup is the timing. You want both timers to be the exact same amount of time. You can see here we have a green duration of 300 seconds and a red duration of 25 seconds. On this timer, we have a green duration of 305 seconds and a red duration of 20. But both of them add up to 325 seconds. If you didn't do it this way, the timers would end up getting off of sync. But in this way, both the timers are going for the exact same amount of time. They just have different green and red periods. And you may have seen when I'm doing this, I actually have them flip-flopped. So we're going to pause it and hopefully this doesn't mess it up too bad. Because we actually want the back doors to stay green for longer and the green door to shut first. And now that we've flip-flopped their settings, the arrow is still in the same space, but the red duration on the front two doors starts earlier. And that's the key. Remember, they both have to have the same total amount of time and the front doors need to shut first. And just for science, you can see that we have 38 kilos of total pressure in this tile, which is a pretty good average for the entire room. And here we go, I've paused it right before it starts. You'll notice that these front doors will shut first, and then the back doors. Front door is shut, all of the steam is trapped, and then the back door is shut thus destroying the steam and there's still 38 kilos of pressure right now but as soon as these doors open it'll be a different story and now the steam pressure is somewhere between 20 and 25 kilos in another half a cycle these doors will shut destroying more steam making sure that no matter how much resin comes in here there'll never be too much steam in here now in production, I did increase these levels. You'll notice that they're still both in sync, but the front doors are set to 570 green and 30 red, and the back doors are set to 25 red with 575 green. That way, this whole system only fires off once per cycle. And the reason why we're doing that is because we want to make sure that there's an ample amount of steam pressure. That way the iron volcano doesn't overheat this room to a point where these steam turbines cannot handle it. Now on to the production of mixed berry pie, which this is definitely not gonna get finished during this episode because it's gonna be sort of a multi-step process for us. So we definitely have the sleet wheat grain taken care of and we have the gristle berry taken care of, but what about the grub fruit? Well, the grub fruit is the challenge here. Now the grub fruit comes from the beautiful grub fruit plant. Now the grub fruit plant has a specific requirement that it has to be taken care of by a divergent species. I looked folks, we don't have any divergent species on this planetoid. Because if we don't have a divergent species of critter, we are stuck with a spindly grub fruit plant. And a spindly grub fruit plant only produces, you guessed it, spindly grub fruit. And that's not what this natural gas range wants for the production of mixed berry pie. If you go to your database and type in critter, you'll see there's an entire section on divergent critters. Click on those and we're given two options, the Almighty Sweetle and the Almighty Grub Grub. Now, if you've never read the database entry for the divergent species, it's actually pretty interesting. Divergent is just the name given to two different genders of one species. The Sweetle being one, the Grub being another. Now, of the two, the Grub Grubs are actually better. They give a much better bonus to the plant, which helps it produce faster, but either one of them will do for our use case. Because all we need for them to do is actually tend the spindly grub fruit plant to turn it into a regular grub fruit plant. We don't care at this point how fast it takes to grow. Okay, so this is not too bad. We know we need some grub fruit plants, which means we need the critters. But once we have the grub fruit plants, what do we do then? Well, then they require 10 kilograms of sulfur per cycle. Lucky for us, we have a beautiful liquid sulfur geyser right here. Now, when you do the math by taking the eruption period, multiplying it by the active period, multiplying that by its actual production of 8.6 kilos per second, we're given about 1.5 kilograms per second indefinitely. Which, if we multiply that times 600 seconds in a cycle, we're given over 900 kilos. Which means we could run 90 grub fruit plants. So sulfur is definitely not going to be the issue. 
To summarize the math you do to get that, first you figure out the percentage of the eruption period, and that's 171, divided by 487, and you get a 0.3511, or 35%. Then if you take the active period of 48.6 and divide it by 96 cycles, you're given an active period of 50%. So let's multiply the 50% times the 35%, and we're given a active and erupting period percentage of about 17.77%. Well, then all we do is multiply that times how much it actually produces during that active and erupted period of 8.6 kilos, and then that's when we're given the 1.52 kilos per second indefinitely. And once you know the 1.52 kilos, you can multiply it times 600 seconds on a cycle, where you're given a final total of just over 900 kilos per cycle. And at 10 kilograms per cycle, well, that's 90 plants. And long story short, if you take 2,000 calories of grub fruit per cycle, and you divide it by the 8 cycles, well, you know that each grub fruit is going to produce 250 calories of grub fruit per cycle. And our dupes, on average, eat 2,000 calories, which means each duplicate would need 8 plants to survive solely off of grub fruit. But lucky for us, the mixed berry pie only requires 1,000 calories of grub fruit. Regardless, we're going to plant as much grub fruit as we can and just go to town with it. Because at that point, we're going to be running barbecue and mixed berry pie and berry sludge when they go to space, so we're going to have plenty of food. We don't need to be that precise with it. So we have our sulfur taken care of, which leaves us one more problem. We need the critters. And that's where the rest of this episode will find us. And that's over on Ouzelos. Now all we really have to do is get a couple of eggs over to our primary colony. That's going to be a little harder than it looks because we got to get a duplicate over there. We got to find the eggs. Then we need to be able to power the teleporter to send the egg on over. So we'll see once we get there. The question of who do we send is a pretty simple one. We're probably going to need to dig and build over there, so we're just going to grab a Hulk. We're going to make sure that Hulk doesn't have any things that he can't do, just in case we need to get over there and do something in a pinch. And then we're going to wish our buddy a bon voyage. All right, Hulk is all loaded up, and we'll see you on the other side, bud. Oh, look at that. He's doing great. Now, we only have 14.6 kilos of nutrient bar, which ends up being about five and a half cycles worth. So I guess we can start by ripping into this. We're going to need a little bit of oxygen to survive on here until we find those pesky critters. I really hope they're on this planetoid. Now, lucky for us, there's polluted oxygen and everything everywhere. So I don't think we're actually going to set up any sort of oxygen supply yet. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? The great thing is when you get over here, you can start inspecting all this stuff too. And because of that, look at all the wonderful floppy disks we get. Ooh, there's even some new entries. I guess first we can see what kind of danger we're in. We'll check out this beautiful geyser, see what it is. Maybe we'll dig over far enough to see if we can see any of the critters. Because unfortunately, what we actually need is their egg. We don't want to tame them yet either. All right, we found the supply teleporter input. Doesn't have any power, but that's not a big deal. We can just put a wheel on it and be good. Now Hulk is not going to be happy with me. He's got a full bladder. He's not going to be able to sleep in a cot. It's going to be bad news bears for him for a little while. We have found a couple of the Sweetles. I really need you guys to lay an egg. And in case anybody's wondering, there's actually a pretty significant soiled suit debuff. Plus 40% stress per cycle. So we're actually going to unequip the suit and that way we only get the 10% stress of having soggy feet. Well, that's less than helpful. It's a carbon dioxide geyser. All right, looks like there's more Sweetles down here, but not a single one has any eggs. So it looks like Hulk might be here for a minute. So we might want to make him a cot until they lay an egg. He's got a cot now, but we're not going to build him any bathrooms. That's where I draw the line. This isn't a vacation. Look at all this beautiful oxalite stuck in here. Now, unfortunately, Hulk is at 93% stress. No big deal. He'll have a mental break and he'll get back to work. Now during these times, it's important to find out what his mental break is going to be. And good news for us, he's only an ugly crier. The one you want to worry about is when he loses his marbles and wants to eat everything in sight, because then that would leave a duplicate without any food. Hulk, you're not an ugly crier at all. You're okay, buddy. You can do it. And if you want to blame somebody, you can only blame yourself because you still have more work to do. And once you finish that work, you can go home. And look at that. 
After Hulk had a good cry, he's down to 62%, 63% stress. It's gonna be just fine. Unfortunately, to activate the supply teleporter, you need field research, which means we're gonna have to throw Hulk into another couple of skill points. Not a big deal, he'll get over it, I promise. But we'll probably wait to do this until the last minute. We may actually end up sending him home first through this teleporter transmitter and bringing somebody else back, depending on when these critters finally decide to lay an egg. We're finding a lot of vents and geysers on Uzalos, so I went to the start map to take a look. Look at all these beauties. A full-fledged water geyser. Those are rare. On top of it, it's got a copper volcano, a cool slush geyser, a cool steam vent. You have plenty of water. Even another iron volcano. I mean, you could technically could run a whole separate colony just on this one planetoid. Hulk is eating again. We've got about two cycles more worth. So we really need one of these Sweetles to lay an egg pretty soon. Worst comes to worst, we can send Hulk back, send someone here once there is an egg. And then we don't have to worry about it. So we have our power source. The battery's being charged. All we need to do now is wait for that egg and then throw it in the conveyor loader. All of these Sweetles running around here and they all seem to be 100% barren. Just one egg! And we finally have it. One Sweetle egg. Unfortunately, Hulk is having himself a good cry, so we're gonna have to wait another minute. But in the meantime, all we have to do now is activate this teleporter and select manual use on the conveyor loader. Scroll on down to Sweetle Egg and load it up. Let's go ahead and give Hulk even more responsibility. Seems like that'd be a good thing right about now. Here we go. Field research. Sweet leg is loaded. Teleporter is being activated. After Hulk plays a game of Asteroids or something, whatever that is. In Hulk's defense, he's really not good at the field research thing. He just started 30 seconds ago. And just to make sure, we'll go over to Brino and find our egg. Should be coming out right here. Oh, yes. There it is. All right, buddy, you can go home now. Just in time, too. He had 1,600 calories left. Thanks, Hulk. I appreciate all your efforts. I just realized I left Hulk's suit on the other planetoid. Not a big deal. We'll just have to create another one. With the successful delivery of our Sweetle Egg, we're ready to get into some mixed berry pie production. Except for the fact that I completely forgot about the grub fruit plant seeds. Not a big deal. We do have access to them. Unfortunately, our teleporter is still recharging. So that's going to have to wait till next episode as well. Now, initially, I'm thinking of some awesome little tube system that just transports the dupes over to this side without them having to get into Atmos suits. Or worst comes to worst, I suppose we could just open it up and extend it this way. We could also put the grub fruit plants in this side of the base. We have plenty of options. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Leave your suggestion in the comments below. Love to hear what you think on where we should put our giant grub fruit farm. Remember, though, we're going to be planting 90 of them. I know it's been quite a while since we've done any episodes on this Max Difficulty series, so I really hope you enjoyed it. We still have a little bit more work here to do. We definitely still want to go to space in our beautiful hydrogen engine, powered by our liquid oxygen and our liquid hydrogen, looking for more artifacts because we want to hit that colony directive as well. We definitely want to open the Temporal Tear over on Fragito. I'd also like to go to the very hot planet, which it's probably this one because it's where our niobium is sitting, and once we have niobium, we can make thermium. Not that we need it for anything, but still something cool to have. And then finally, we're obviously going to want to build a big statue, or three. I don't know. We're going to have to get to that as well. So I hope you enjoyed coming back to Max Paradise and our Max Difficulty run. I know I had a good time too, other than this annoying error that keeps popping up every time I load the game, because it's taking so long to load. Hence the reason why it's taking me so much longer to make these episodes. And that's why our next episode will either be a Colony Fixer episode or an Absolute Beginner series. Now the Absolute Beginner series really doesn't do well on the views, but I know there's still a large group of people that really like that series and are really getting a lot of good information out of it. Because of that, I'm still going to keep making them. Our Colony Fixer series, on the other hand, has been hugely popular. And as a matter of fact, we had four or five more community members send me maps. So I can't wait to look at them as well. A lot of great oxygen not included coming to this channel in the new year. Hope you're looking forward to it as much as I am. And I'll talk to you soon. 